Hello, welcome back to New Zealand for another few minutes of more data mining with Weka. By the way, I'd just like to uh, thank all of those who did the first course for their nice comments and feedback. Uh, you know, the University of Waikato is just a little university on the far side of the world, but they listen. They listen when they hear feedback, and they've listened to you. So, as you can see, they've put me in a bigger office with uh, more books and uh, a bigger plant, you know, so this has been great. Uh, they really appreciate the uh, positive feedback that we've had from you for the previous course. Thank you very much indeed. Today we're going to look at the experimenter. As you know, there are four interfaces to Weka: the explorer, which we looked at in the last course, and the experimenter and two more. So we're going to look at the experimenter today and uh, in the next lesson as well. It's used for things like determining the mean and standard deviation performance of a classification algorithm on a data set, which you did manually actually in the previous course. Or it's easy to do several algorithms on several data sets. And you can find out whether one classifier is better than another on a particular data set and whether the difference is statistically significant or not. You can uh, check the effect of different parameter settings of an algorithm. And uh, you can actually express the results of these tests as an ARF file, so you can sort of do data mining on the results of data mining experiments, if you like. Uh, and in, in the experimenter, sometimes the computation takes uh, days or even weeks. And it can be distributed over several computers, like all the computers in a lab. That's quite easy to do with the experimenter, but we're not going to be covering that uh, in this course. Uh, when you invoke the experimenter, you get three panels, the setup panel, the run panel, and the analyze panel. But before we go to those, let me just refresh your memory. This is a slide from Data Mining with Weka, lesson 2.3, I think, where we talked about the training set and the test set. Basic assumption of machine learning is that these are independent sets produced by independent sampling from an infinite population. And uh, in Lesson 2.3, and perhaps uh, if you don't remember this, you could go back and look at that video from the first course again. We took a data set segment challenge and a, and a learning algorithm, J48, and we used the percentage split method of evaluation, and we evaluated it, got a certain figure for the accuracy, and then we repeated that with different random number seeds, and in fact we got 10 different figures for the accuracy. And from those, we manually computed the sample mean and the variance, and hence the standard deviation. If you can't remember that, go and refresh your memory. And also, while we're at it, let me just remind you about cross-validation in Lesson 2.5 of Data Mining with Weka. We looked at this technique of tenfold cross-validation, which involves dividing the data set into ten parts, holding out each part in turn, and averaging, averaging the results over the ten runs. Okay, well now let's get into the experimenter. If I just go here and click Experimenter, I get the Setup panel. I'm going to start a new experiment. I'm just going to note that we've got uh, tenfold cross-validation by default, and we're repeating the experiment ten times by default. I'm going to add a data set. I'm going to add Segment Challenge data set, which is here. I'm going to add a uh, machine learning algorithm. I'm going to use uh, J48. You've seen this kind of menu before many, many times. It's the same as in the Explorer. If I just click, uh, select J48 and click OK, then I've got this data set and this learning algorithm. And uh, well, let's just run it. So I'm going to go to the Run panel and click Start. And it's running it. You can see at the bottom here, it's doing the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th run, because we repeated the whole thing 10 times. We repeated 10-fold cross-validation 10 times. Now if I go to the Analyze panel, it doesn't show anything. I need to analyze the results of the experiment I just did. Click Experiment. And I need to perform the test. And you can see here that it's showing for a data set called Segment, we got an average of 95.71% correct using this J48 algorithm. We wanted to look at the standard deviation. If I click Show Standard Deviations and perform the test again, then I get the standard deviation. So we've effectively done what we did rather more laboriously in the first course by doing 10 individual runs. 
Over on the slide here, this kind of just summarizes what we've done in the setup panel. We set things up in the run panel. We just clicked start in the analyze panel. We selected show standard. We clicked experiment. That's important. And uh, we selected show standard deviations and performed the test. Okay. Now, what about those detailed results of the individual runs? Well, I'm going to go back to the setup panel here. And uh, I'm going to write the results to a CSV file, which um, I will call uh, Lesson 1.2. And uh, I think I'll just do a um, percentage split here. Percentage split, I'll do 90% training, 10% test. I've got my data set and my machine learning method, so I'll just go and run. And if I look at the CSV file that's being produced, well, here it is. Uh, we repeated the experiment 10 times. So these are the 10 different runs. And for each of these 10 runs, we've got a lot of information. A lot of information. Uh, the information that we're really looking for here is percent correct. Uh, that's the percent correct for each of those 10 separate runs. But we've got all sorts of other stuff here, including, for example, the user time, the elapsed time, lots and lots of other things. Maybe you should take a look at those yourself. So that's given us a detailed results for each of the 10 runs. Now I'm going to do a tenfold cross-validation now. So these are the 10 repetitions, right? And we did a single percentage split. If I do tenfold cross-validation and uh, write the result into a file and run it again, it takes a little bit longer because it's doing cross-validation each time. Uh, now it's finished, and if we look at the resulting file, we get something that's very similar but much bigger. We repeated the whole thing 10 times. We repeated tenfold cross-validation 10 times. So this is the first uh, run, and there were 10 folds. So there are 10 folds of the first run, here are the 10 folds of the second run, and so on. And I've got the same results as I had before along here. So I've got a very detailed account of what was done in that experiment. Uh, so just coming back to the slides here, uh, we uh, to get detailed results, we went back to the setup panel and selected a CSV file and put in a file name for results. And uh, this is the file that we got with percentage split. And then we did the same thing for the cross-validation experiment and got a larger results spreadsheet. Okay, so let's just review the uh, experimenter. We've got three panels, the setup panel. Here you can open an experiment and you can save an experiment, but what we usually do is start a new experiment. So we normally start by clicking here. There's an advanced mode. We're not going to talk about the advanced mode here. We're going to continue to use the simple mode of the experimenter. You can set a file name for the results if you want, either an R file or a CSV file, or in fact a database file. You can do either a cross-validation or a percentage split. Actually, you can preserve the order in percentage split. The reason for that is that there's no way of specifying a separate test file in the experiment. Or to do that, you would kind of glue the training set and test set together and uh, preserve the order and specify the appropriate percentage so that those last instances were used as the test set. Normally, if we're not doing that, we just randomize things for the percentage split. We've got the number of repetitions. We repeated the whole thing 10 times, but we could have repeated it 100 times. Um, and uh, here we can add new data sets. We can add more data sets. We can delete data sets that we've added, delete this data set. And uh, here we add more uh, learning algorithms. We can just add new learning algorithms and delete learning algorithms. That's the setup panel. Then there's a run panel. You don't do much on the run panel except click start and just monitor for errors here. There were zero errors in the three runs I did. And then the analyze panel, you can load results from a file or a database. But uh, what we normally want to do is to click experiment here to get the results from the experiment we've just done. 
and there, there are many options and we're going to be looking at some of these options uh, as we uh, go through uh, this course. So that's the experimenter. We've uh, learned how to open the experimenter, we've looked at the setup, run and analyze panels, we've evaluated a classifier on a data set using both cross-validation repeated 10 times and percentage split repeated 10 times. We've looked at the spreadsheet output, uh, we've looked at the analyze panel, we find out how to get the mean and the standard deviation, and we've looked at some of the other options on the setup and run panels. There's a chapter in the course text on the experimenter, chapter 13, and uh, if you go to the activity now associated with this lesson, you will do some of the things I've just been doing and more besides. Good luck, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.